This program is a part of a series of studies that our Pastor Gion has prepared for you. Welcome to Victory Church Odessa. Our goal is to exalt the name of our Lord Jesus and to encourage you to develop more faith by reflecting on the Bible. We hope you will enjoy this program. Now let me introduce you to our Pastor Gian. Gospel Parallels, episode 20, March 29, 2023. This is the Bible study with Victory Church, Odessa. From Odessa, Texas, I say hello to you. My dear friend, I am Gian, the founding pastor of Victory Church, Odessa. It is my honor to be here with you sharing this Bible study. And what is this Gospel Parallels? Why the the word parallels when it's about the gospel. Well, as you know, there are four gospels in the New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. So as you can see here on this image, imagine you are in a highway and you are just going the highway and you switch lanes for whatever reason. Well, with uh, this study, that's what we are doing. We switch from Matthew to Mark to Luke and John and vice versa, and we are reading chronologically so some things are in Matthew that aren't in other Gospels and same thing happens particularly here with uh, this reading of today only in the Gospel of John but I remind you our video platforms Apple TV YouTube Vimeo Facebook Roku TV the Fire Amazon TV in our audio platforms uh, the podcast Spotify, Google Podcast, iHeartRadio, and Victory Radio 24-7. That's right. <laughs> In our previous episode, we studied the wedding in Cana. That was only described in the Gospel of John. Guess what's going on now that we are going to continue studying the Scripture? Right. As you can see here, right? What is what we have? Here is only listed in John as well. Chapter 2, verses 12 through 22. Capernaum and the cleansing of the temple in Jerusalem. And this reading comes from the easy-to-read version. And we read in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Please, Lord, guide us through this reflection. Amen. Ready? Full screen here for you. We read John 2, 12 through 22. Then Jesus went to the town of Capernaum. His mother and brothers and his followers went with him. They all stayed there a few days. It was almost time for the Jewish Passover. So Jesus went to Jerusalem. There in the temple area, he saw men selling cattle, sheep, and doves. He saw others sitting at tables, exchanging and trading people's money. Jesus made a whip with some pieces of rope. Then he forced all these men and the sheep and cattle to leave the temple area. He turned over the tables of the money traders and scattered their money. Then he said to those who were selling pigeons, take these things out of here. Don't make my father's house a place for buying and selling. When this happened, His followers remembered what was written in the scriptures. My strong devotion to your temple will destroy me. Some Jews said to Jesus, Show us a miracle as a sign from God. Prove that you have the right to do these things. Jesus answered, Destroy this temple and I will build it again in three days. They answered, People worked 46 years to build this temple. Do you really believe that you can build it again in three days? But the temple Jesus meant was his own body. After he was raised from death, his followers remembered that he said this. So they believed the scriptures and they believed the word Jesus said. Wow, what a passage. (laughs) Do you agree? Well, let's start with this particular passage thing about family and disciples traveling together. 
you have family, right? And you have friends. So what happens when you put together family and friends and you are in the middle? You know, right? It's an issue. Why? Because family are used to do things certain way and friends are used to do things their own way. And now we have here the Lord Jesus leading family and friends and try to keep harmony. You know that in order to keep harmony in a group, there has to be a lot of peace among everybody, particularly the leader. You, whether you are a mom, dad, supervisor, business owner, small group leader, whatever is what you lead, you as a leader know that it's very hard to keep the cool in some occasions, right? Especially when you are talking about those that are close to you, that you love and you care, especially for them. And they know it. They care for you and they feel close to you. And that happens in all groups, you know. You are the one that is in, in, in the middle, kind of a, the glue to everybody around. And everyone wants to be close to you. Everybody. So you as a leader, you know that you need to keep the cool. But sometimes family are pulling you in this direction, friends in this direction. And here in this particular case, we have Mary, the Lord's mom, and his siblings, brothers, and his disciples. And everyone wants to feel important. And everyone has an opinion. And everyone has a suggestion. That's a problem. And there is a little bit of competition about everybody thinking who is the one that is closest to him. <laughs> who is the one that he confide, confides the most? Who is the one that he's spending more time with? You know what is interesting here? That the Lord Jesus knew how to handle the situation. And the first thing is to keep the cool. To keep the cool. And he did. He did pretty good. Now, the interesting thing is, after they are traveling to Capernaum, and it's time for the Passover, and they need to go down to Jerusalem, which is funny, you know, when the, he says, the scripture says, and they, they went up there to Capernaum, and then they got down to Jerusalem, you know, it makes me think like when you are in a town, right? And you go, let's go down or let's go up there. <laughs> Same thing, right? And they are all going down to Jerusalem. And, uh, and then he finds this thing that was absolutely upsetting. The family and friends, they are with the Lord, right? And they know that the Lord is, is pretty calm, sweet doing miracles here and there, you know, teaching, you know, great character, you know, he keeps the cool. Everybody knows that. Well, they come to Jerusalem, they come to the temple, and then the sweet Jesus that everybody knows is transformed. Ooh. <laughs> Can you imagine that? Suddenly, sweet Jesus is uh, someone with a whip. I can imagine the disciples wondering, what is he doing? You know, because he is making this whip with pieces of rope. Maybe they asked him. The scripture doesn't say that they asked. It just says that the Lord made the whip out of those rope. Now imagine everybody looking at the Lord thinking that maybe he will teach something, you know, heal somebody or whatever. And suddenly they look at him, creating this whip. And without saying one word, they just look at him. And he is not the sweet guy they are used to see. Huh. Not at all. It's the opposite. This time, he is angry, really angry, not just uncomfortable, you know. 
He is really angry. And he forced the men selling the cattle and the cattle to leave the temple area. And it makes sense when you think about it, you know, it's the temple. And of course, there are laws about the sacrifices and the, the, depending on the severity of the sin, they need to present different type of animal, the whole cow or a pigeon, you know, a dove, if they were poor. That was part of the law, you know, the Jewish law. Moses wrote that, and so Jews were used to that, but somehow things changed. I want to go there in a moment, but let's go back to the to what is happening in the mind of the family members and disciples. They all know how sweet the Lord is, you know. They can't believe what they are witnessing. Sweet Jesus now making a whip? Why? And now he is forcing all these people to get out of here. Don't make my father's house a place for buying and selling, he says. Actually, he went to the tables where they were trading coins and currency from different countries and all that. He threw the, tam the, the tables and that was a lot of problem for everybody because all these guys, the traders, that was, that was their inventory, if you analyze, because money is just that. Currency is just an item that you exchange, you know. Their inventory was cash, coins or whatever. And then this man with a whip who already put all these <laughs> cattle sellers outside of the temple area comes there where you have your table with your coins and your whatever. That's a problem. Now the family members and disciples are trying to figure it out. What is going on here? I want to know. I need an explanation. And you know in all groups there are ones that they don't need an explanation. They see their leader getting upset for something, they go with the leader. Just imagine for a second. Who do you think was the first one who went with the Lord ready to beat up these guys? <laughs> okay, come on Bible scholars, you know it. The spontaneous one, right? Peter! <laughs> ta -ta 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 -ta. More likely he was the first one who was standing next to him like this. So what? Giving them their look <laughs> like, don't you dare, don't you try. <laughs> and there are others, you know, like John, that was very loving to the Lord Jesus, but, you know, a different type of personality. Probably he was just with his arms, you know, in his garment, just thinking, what's happening? Lord, why are you doing this, Master? <laughs> and the family, the same thing, right? You see the problem, right? So it's, it's a real turmoil out there, out there. I'll come back to the story. Let's go back to one idea. Why in the world were they doing this there? Because, as again, as I told you, it was the custom among Jews to present animals for this, according to the severity of their sins. It could be a cow, if the sin was pretty awful, and uh, it could be a different kind of animal. But if they were poor, the law said, you can just bring a bird, you know, and it's okay. Then the, the job of the priests was to, you know, pour the, the blood of those animals in the altar and do their ceremony and the family or the person who brought the sacrifice was forgiven, you know, the absolution of their sins, you understand. But why the Lord was upset? More likely, it sounds like those individuals selling those things, which is understandable that they sell those things, Apparently, they were getting closer and closer and closer to the temple to a point where there was no area at all 
to really do what they should be doing. Because this was just unacceptable. Don't make my father's house a place for buying and selling. That means everybody there was just, it was like a shopping center. <laughs> like a mall, you know? And of course, there were many businesses going on here and there. The question is, why the leaders, the re re religious leaders, never stopped that before? Why do you think? Mm -hmm. More likely, they were making a profit as well. Interesting, huh? Because if those guys were somewhere there selling their stuff, the Lord will never have a problem with that. Why? It was what his father, the Lord God Almighty, mighty told Moses to do. This is what I want you to do, guys. When you sin, bring this animal. So the Lord will not, nor the Lord Jesus will never contradict his father. He always was compliant. As a son, as a child, as a man, as a Jew, he was compliant. He understood that, but obviously it, there was an abuse. So now let's bring it home. <laughs> What is what we see today in churches? Sometimes it's exactly that. That somehow churches have lost the main focus of their jobs. You know, what is the job of a church? Well, to worship God, number one, right? Provide services for the community and help people to get closer to the Lord. Now, you have to understand that the, the meat that uh, those animals represented was part of the way of those priests made a living in offerings like grains to give you an example wheat they were part of the processes that were implemented by the law of moses priests actually lived out of that so we understand that in church there are contributions. People bring contributions because that helped to take care of the expenses of the ministry. The pastor's salary and everybody else's income, workers of the church, etc. All the expenses, right? So we understand that. Unfortunately, sometimes in churches we forget that it's not about the material things that we are getting together. It's about the spirituality. That is what the Lord was saying. You just are making this place a place for, for buying and selling. That's just wrong. I understand the Lord was saying. You guys need to bring the, the cows and the doves and all that. Well, okay. You come from other countries and you need to exchange your currency Okay, but you don't have to do this here. On the other hand, you also have to see this other angle. That there were many that were buying and selling, not necessarily for the purposes of religious intentions. Not necessarily. Which takes us to another point, interesting point, which is in church. We have people doing business with each other, brothers and sisters, and there is nothing wrong with that. But there is a time for that. When the time comes for the worship service, we are there to worship the Lord, to say our prayers, to hear the word of God. That makes absolutely sense, right? Now, naturally, all these people were upset. You know, what I'm going to do now with my cattle? <laughs> Where I'm going to be exchanging currency. I'm losing money. Aha. Uh Aha. -huh. <laughs> uh -huh. If there is something that is going to upset people is their source of income. Definitely. And that includes leaders in churches and church members and all kind of merchants that provide services for anybody. Not just in the church, everywhere. You affect the source of income of somebody, you are poking their eyes. Hey, what you doing? <laughs> Naturally, right? 
But imagine what is what the Lord felt that he did that. It's possible that the Lord saw this many, many times during all his visits to Jerusalem in Passover. You remember, he was there when he was presented. And then later, if you remember, uh, he, when he was 12 years old, he was talking with the leaders there in the temple in Jerusalem. And every so often when his family was coming to celebrate Passover, he, see, he was there, he saw that. And obviously he was all the time considering, this is not right. But it was not his time until that day when it was his time. Because he knows when is the right time. You need to learn that there are things that are totally unfair in life, even in church. But it's important to wait to make changes and express your view when is the right time. When is the right time? Well, the right time is when the Lord says it. <laughs> when the Lord tells you, this is the right time for me to express my view about what's going on in my church and talk to the leaders. When the Lord tells you, that's the right time, my friend. And when he says that, go ahead. And you're going to be bold like the Lord. Remember that the Lord didn't hit anybody. It's a very important point. Very important point. He didn't hurt anybody. He forced them. How? Well, imagine there were many ways to force them. First, the number one is he has a whip in the head. So he's like, okay, who wants one of this? <laughs> to begin with, the cattle, you know. You show a whip to, to a cow or whatever type of animal, they will immediately understand, that, oh, oh, I'm out of here. <laughs> In people as well. So the whip was one way. What about words? You know, to put certain order where there is lack of order and abuse, the voice of command, the voice of the leader, the voice of the mother in the house will put order. Now, there is nothing wrong with you, mom, to get your spatula, your chancla, <laughs> your shoe, anything. But the voice is important. It's very possible the Lord was saying something. Now, you have to understand also his eyes, the expression in his face. You know, you were a little one. You were doing some things and your mom, your dad, your grandpa, somebody, the teacher, gave you that look. You know what look I am talking about, right? When they gave you that look, you immediately stopped what you were doing, right? You went... <gasps> <"Ding!"> <laughs> right? So you see the whip, the voice, his eyes, the expression in his face. But mainly was the authority of his persona himself, because the Lord Jesus brings order uh, because of the authority that he possesses. He was right. And when people are doing wrong things, and they know it, because they knew it, the leaders and the merchants, everybody knew it. We are abusing here. This is not the place to do this. When people that are doing the wrong thing, they see somebody that is stopping that wrong thing. Sometimes there are no words needed. Sometimes there is no look. You don't need to see anything. You just know it. It's like when you are doing what is wrong and suddenly you feel that the Lord God is there without saying one word to you, but you just feel it. You just stop there. I'm not going to do that. The authority of the Lord God. But there are some there, they actually confronted the Lord. They said, okay, so tell us, why, why are you doing this? 
give us a proof that this is a sign from God. <laughs> the Lord. <laughs> I just love his answer. Basically, he was saying, here's your sign. And some of you here in America understand this is a, a funny statement. Here's your sign, you know. But pretty much the Lord was telling them something like that. Destroy this temple and I will build it again in three days. I just love the intelligence of our Lord. I love his intelligence. The way he said what he said, what did, how he created that line, arguing with them, you know, destroyed any possibility of arguing. They, they, what, what? You want to prove? This is the proof. Destroy this temple and I will build it again in three days. And those people were confused. Can you imagine the family and disciples? At this point, they were okay. They said, well, he's right, you know. This is just wrong. So, and then they asked him, right? Give us a proof of this is coming from God. And everybody turns around, right, to see Jesus. What is, what is he, he is about to say, you know? <laughs> Peter, John, all the disciples, the mother, the siblings, the brothers. Even the people there waiting. What he has to say about that. And then the Lord says, destroy this temple and I will be there again in three days. People were shaking their heads thinking, what that has to do with anything? This temple building it again in three days? What? <laughs> people didn't understand what he was saying. They even say, they took 46 years building this, and you say you're going to rebuild it in three days? You are nuts. Now, what is cool about this is that it was after his death and resurrection when the followers understood why he said that. They remembered those words, and then they believed You know, my friend, sometimes the Lord is telling you some things. Sometimes your pastor is telling you some things. Sometimes it's your mom. Sometimes it's your dad. Sometimes it's somebody that tells you something that is true, but you don't get it until time later. It registered. What they said, it registered. You just didn't get it. It was until later that one day you say, Ah, that is what he meant. I get it now. <laughs> Wonderful things that we learn every single day by reading the word of the Lord. I'm glad that you were here. This was John chapter 2, verses 12 to 22. Episode number 20. Here, Gospel Parallels. I hope that you enjoyed it. Keep reflecting with us. What a wonderful thing is to read the Word of God, don't you think? Good night. Victory Radio is now available 24-7. Visit our website, www.victoryradio.us. Great music, positive messages, optimism to keep you company while you work, or when you drive, or when you are at home cooking. Faith is what you need. Faith comes when you hear the right thing. Victory Radio is the new thing. Find us on the website, www.victoryradio.us. Have a great rest of your day. If you own a Roku TV, a Roku TV device, an Apple TV device, or own a Fire Stick, we invite you to install the Geon TV app. With the Geon TV app installed on your TV, you will be able to watch all the videos from the comfort of your home and be inspired with our programs. Enjoy music, inspirational videos, Bible teachings, and beautiful videos that will keep your tank of faith full all the time at the touch of a button. Remember G on TV. 
Receive the inspiration to achieve your calling in life. By Giancarlo Vicitoro. I know you have suffered, but what if you would have never met your mom because she died giving birth to you? That's the beginning of Simon's story. Then Simon's father died when he was only 15 years old. He was sent to a foster home where he was bullied, humiliated, and there was no one to protect him. But Simon decided to find a way to get his revenge by studying and becoming good at sports. He won a scholarship, and soon he started his own business, Simon Yardwork. Mean people were envious of his success, but one day, Simon met and fell in love with Jackie. They were happy, until the FBI arrested Simon due to clues that incriminated him with several murdered people. Will Simon end up in prison? Don't miss the outcome of this story, The Best Revenge, the musical that will inspire everyone to pay good for evil. Go to mygiancarlo.com to purchase The Best Revenge on audio and video. Welcome to this website, MyNewMentor.com. Here you will find the tools to establish a direct communication with your new mentor, Gian. Get the available spot on Gian's schedule and set your appointment to have an audio or video call via Skype with Gian. Do you like new movies, new books, new music? Go to MyGiancarlo.com. There is a new album, Adore, 10 songs. I wrote the songs and I sing those songs with a wonderful band of musicians and singers. If you sign up in mygiancarlo.com, I will give you one song for free. Take advantage of this free song and enjoy this wonderful production. The blessings of God are going to come to you when you are listening to the right thing, God's Word. You can find us in all of these platforms. Search for Gian TV on Apple TV, Roku TV, and Fire TV. Do you prefer a podcast? Find us too. And remember Victory Radio 24-7. The kingdom of God is near. Thank you for investing time with Victory Church Odessa. Feel free to subscribe to our channel here on this platform. Also, you can go to our website, vchurch.us, to connect with the rest of the platforms where you can follow us. Our address is 2400 West 81st Street, Odessa, Texas, 79764. Our Sunday worship service begins at 10 a.m. Our phone number is 432-614-9798. Our email address is info at vchurch.us. Feel free to share this program with your family and friends. Until next time, we wish you a wonderful rest of your day. Many blessings in the name of our Lord Jesus.